coming in. Hi, everybody. It's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? All right, so tonight is a, this is a nail-biter night. Judy and I are stressed out to the max. Um, and we have a lot of people that are still out there voting and doing all that stuff. So let's see who's joined us now. Jill Anderson has joined us from New Jersey. Chris DePiro, Jersey guy. Rena Cunelli Berge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Jill Anderson, big heart. Hi, Jill. Melissa Regina mm -hmm. McNamara and my cousin Marisa has joined us. Jason Peck, Timothy Dean Cochran, Lauren Echo, Scott Silver. Hi, everybody. How's it going? All right. So welcome to our midterm election show. Listen, we could have done a million things tonight, like had special guests, whatever, but we had to go with what's really happening. So uh, here we are in the thick of it. We were watching this before, and it's like, when I said nail biter, I'm not joking. It's crazy how close some of these races are. And then it's not so, some of them are not so close at all. And it's, uh, for us, it's very discouraging. Um, like in Tennessee right now. I, I, I'm not discouraged. I, I This was an uphill battle anyway. There were so many, in the Senate, there were so many, there were so many um, Democratic seats up for re-election in, in, in big states, uh, bellwether states with that Trump one. So I'm not discouraged. Um, I, it looks like we're going to win the House. So, I mean, that's that's good. Uh, Florida. Let's talk about Florida, guys. Before we do that, because there's a lot to talk about in Florida. Eddie Kutu has joined us. Rena said nail biting. Nia, Rena, that's what I've been saying all day. Um, hi, Marisa. Leo Roriga says joined us. Hi, Leo. How are you, honey? Um, Eddie Kutu is out in Connecticut. You guys, Chris Murphy did win your seat incumbent. We love Chris Murphy. He's a, um, a, a vet and he's amazing. Chris DePiro said hotties. What? Thank you, Chris. I had to flip my hair for that one. Um, Randa has joined us. Hi, Randa. Flipping between you and CNN. That's, oh, that's, I like that. Thank you. That's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, MSNBC in the end here. Yep, and I have a my chart that's telling me how many we flipped three seats in the house already, which is really good. Yeah. Um, Shep is, is everybody watching what's going on in Florida? I can't. Well, we and every time I'm going to Florida on Friday. Well, you lived in Florida for a while. I lived in Florida for a while. And you, I'm, I'm proud of Miami Dade, though. Yes. My, and and uh, let me just say, I'm proud of Broward County. I'm proud of Miami Dade. They are, uh, you know, but oh my God, the rest of that state, get it together. Hi, Andrew Holmes. All right, oh. so here's the deal. People always say, what's up with Florida? So I've never lived there. I visited there. I'm not a big fan. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a fan. Um, uh, only because it, it's huge and there's like, it. there's just, you know, I like, I'm very big about the Northeast. However, so Scott Ryan, our friend Scott Ryan is going to call us from Florida at 915. Scotty and I were roommates here for many years. He's originally from Maryland. He's going to call him. But Judy lived in Florida for quite some time. And you also, you gave me a lot of insight into why Florida votes the way it does. But it's so diverse, isn't it? Like, I mean, you have now. Well, you have Cubans. It's not diverse at all. Actually, you have Argentines. No, no, no. There's, there's a big Cuban population, obviously, it, it, because of the proximity to uh, to Cuba. Um, and a lot of Cubans vote Republican. But and can then, you explain why? Because I, I explain actually really don't know. I wouldn't be able to give a good explanation. They just somehow feel that uh, democracy is very close to socialism, which is very close to uh, communism. communism, which is like a really bad math problem. Like they, they it's like an, if you, it, it's, I can I can make it a metaphor like if you they're really bad at algebra because actually how they get from democracy to communism I well, have I think no they're clue. frightened because of what you know the whole Castro thing right. and going in there and taking everything that they had yeah so once they came to America it's like we're not letting go of anything you're not taking anything you're not dividing anything up if we have money we want to hold on to it and I bet that's a huge part of it but the rest of the state is pretty is, is pretty Alabama. Well, well, it's right there. I have to make jokes. No, I know. I myself feel yeah, and then you uh, have. Uh, speaking of Alabama, actually, I'm so glad. Yeah. That's a great yeah, right. segue. All right. I, I today I was um, looking. I think I, I had such a busy day, so I wasn't able to at all uh, see what was going on. Stop with any for of a second. States. Andrew jo uh, uh, Holmes has joined us. Hi, Andrew. Anthony Burley has joined us. Edie Gershman. Hi, Edie. My Rodan and Fields business partner, Michael Klein. 
Okay, Scott Ryan, Florida. Ugh, I know. Scotty, you're going to call in. Keep saying what you were saying. Today you were at school. You had a very busy day. Yeah, I was just working a minute, whatever. So I, I went online to try to figure out what was going on uh, with, uh, with, you know, with the polls. And um, I was looking at the questions at the bottom of the ballot. I think in New Jersey we voted to expand um, education for children. And, you know, I think Maria said in New York they – uh, they term they limits, voted on term limits for, for councilmen. They uh, they had. Um, do we want uh, people to civically be involved in in community projects? Which yes, of course. I thought that was a really good one. And there was one more. I'll have to think of it in a minute. Well, but it was all great stuff. Many of the positive. states were really actually very surprisingly progressive. A lot of the states have the same similar thing. I think Florida had um, whether to allow felons to vote because I think in Florida, if you've ever been a felon you can't vote now, not even after a certain amount of time you just can't vote i think they they were voting on that today uh a lot of them had marijuana um questions on questions their on their ballot whether to, to make it, it uh whether to make it okay for medically neat you know uh, for medicinal purposes whether to make it legal period um a lot of them had um a, a few of them had that felon uh one in there some expansion of medicaid uh, and whatever you know what alabama had two questions Alabama had two questions. One of them, are you ready for this? Whether they should, they were voting on this. Should they um, write the Ten Commandments on their buildings, on their government buildings? No! Wait, wait. <laughs> you shouldn't even vote? What is happening? And the second one was to amend the Constitution the to not allow um to not that the constitution can't so the state constitution sorry we're going to amend that so that it can't protect abortion rights the, that's what they're well that's on. no surprise i mean these people are so right wing not the sense. i but this is what kills me about the whole but i mean people have their feelings nobody first of all let me just say this nobody wants to have an abortion number one let's just get that off out of the way i'm, so, I'm sure now, some people do i mean you can't make a, a total no but i'm saying like nobody that, says but, oh yeah these are People, these are big decisions that people make. But, okay, so you're trying to protect the unborn child. Why don't you protect children when they're born? It's like almost like they're born and then nobody cares about them. So it's a very strange, I, I can't understand. I mean, I'm, I don't understand. So but, I was horrified. When I read that, I'm like, oh, my God, is this for real? Are yeah, they well, seriously? The Al Alabama's Imagine if other... I lived in Alabama. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Mandar, <laughs> Chick Magnet has joined us. Do you know Mandar Chick Magna? I don't think I yes, do. Yes, Mandar. Mandar, what country are you from? And were you born here? Or, or uh, and because Mandar is um, very exotic and obviously a chick magnet, but. Um, <laughs> hold he, her back. What? Oh, I yeah. know. Who's saying hold her back? Yeah. I, yes, it's true. She gets very excited. Well, before the show, Andrew Holmes, I blame Shanna Sharp for Alabama. <laughs> oh, my God. Poor Shanna. Speaking of which, Shanna is our friend. We love her. Tonight. At Mess Hall, Harlem, 2194 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, between 118th and 119th, they are having an election party. So if you are in that area after the show, run down if, there. If you want a party, I mean, I, I well, don't know. Some people want to drink. Oh, and, you know, gosh. they might want to hit the sauce. Either way, celebrate or hit the sauce. I mean, either way. And the kitchen is open till 11. So you go down there and tell them that Maria sent you. And I think Shanna is there, and they are having a, a party. So if you want to go some, born in India, okay, Mandar, but been here forever. Yes, I thought so. I wasn't sure. So um, I'm sure it, elections are very different. I, well, who knows? Maybe they're not. I know there's a lot happening. Hey, really, really quick. I don't mean to interrupt no, you. No, please I do interrupt wanna you. Say, <laughs> I do want to say amazing Texas. Is everybody watching whether he wins or not? What a great race for Beto O'Rourke. Yes. Amazing. I don't think. Well, Spinberger is winning. Oh, she won in Virginia. So that was a big deal, too. I'm so proud of Beto O'Rourke. I think that, I mean, even the, the state of Texas, he was ahead uh, by some points. I don't know that he's going to win, but I yeah. think he did an amazing job. No one has, I mean, for, for decades, I don't think that it's ever been such a close race between a Democrat and a um In and Texas, a, and a not senator. for 24 years Yeah, that, that they've even had a Democrat. Amazing. Now, and I will say, I, I know it's, I don't take delight in the the misfortune of others. I'm not one of those people. I'm not like that. I, I, I pray for everybody. However, 
If he does win, oh my God! I mean, who who, who likes wants to see Ted Cruz? Who anymore? likes Ted Cruz? Does anybody like I him? I mean, are we sick of his face he, or what? Even his kids, like they might be like, oh, yeah, Beto's I great. Mean, I don't know. I mean, I hate to say that because I don't want to be mean or anything because that's not my style. Beto is it's the, my style. Yeah, you. So you'd be the mean one. Beto is the guy to watch in the future. I agree. Yes, with I agree. I love him. He's yes, great. He's and, fabulous. Uh, Mandar, your Leo Rodriguez. Okay, Steve Gorin. Um, have you done the, uh, I have done the Leo Rodriguez. I have done that. And the Leo's from California, so California always votes um, sensibly. Steve Gorin has joined us. Steve Gorin, my friend, um, who does live in Florida, but he's here now. Steve, what are we going to do with Florida? What on earth are we going to do with Oh, Florida? my gosh. Like, yeah. oh, my gosh. Randa, I agree. <laughs> Beto 2020. However, if he does win... He can still run, I think. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to. No, I mean, they were saying before to. that he wants to just serve Texas if he wins. If he loses, though, there's our candidate. Yeah, actually, if he loses, and I then was Joe, watching uh, MSNBC earlier yeah, today. Then Joe Kennedy can be his running mate. I love Joe Kennedy. Big fan. He's from Massachusetts. Judy, explain why they call races so early. Excellent question. <laughs> I uh, think that when... So that Judy can go to bed at a reasonable hour? Yeah, I mean, I'm what not going to sleep tonight. Reasonable hour? No, no. I think that crazy. they, I think that for the most part, these analysts, I mean, the, these are these are regressions that they run, so they're pretty good at at uh, at knowing where the race is is going. Um, so I think uh, for the most part, like New Jersey, before we saw, they called it really early. Yeah. Um, but I think these analysts have been able to uh, run regressions on the different polling sites, um, and they know that the that the state is going to go to Bob Menendez, so they would call it early, even though when they called it for Bob Menendez, it was showing him at a deficit. Right. But they Which still called strange. it. They still called it for him. And then Zito has joined us. Marie Sullivan Baca has joined us. Melissa Driscoll. Hi, Missy. Um, so I'm, that's why I hope I answered your question as best as I could. And a regression, in case you don't... Uh, I, I don't okay. know what that is. Right. Please tell a me. regression is just uh, numbers. It's just numbers that they run at history, and then they, they run the... Yeah, they run historical numbers, and then they, they figure, okay, this is usually what's going to happen oh, okay. in these uh, polling sites. Like a trend. That are... Like right. Polling, okay. Correct. I, I'm, it's hard to... Well, I'm not going to so watch that It's funny, that speaking, of, um, speaking of uh, math, before I was looking at this and I'm like, okay, so it's not going to be the blue wave that I was so, I woke up this morning, I was on fire. Yeah. I was like, I did my hair. Well, you're I, usually I was fire. like so anyway, excited. I, 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 so. I Right? Go ahead. Judy, yeah, very well. passionate, Judy. Chocolatina has joined us. Um, uh, let me see. Thank you, future representative Senator Mesa. You know, uh, Leo has always wanted you to run. Thank you, Leo. Yeah. Where would you run in New Jersey? Probably. Right? I don't. I think I might have to move to Alabama and stir it up over there. Whoa. I think that's where I'm gonna have to. Wait, do. can you imagine Judy Mason I'm in Alabama? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to run there. Down there. Wow, that would be crazy. Yeah. So oh, speaking but, of uh, math, so we were talking about it. I said, okay, it's not gonna be the blue wave that that I that I wanted. Beto was in the lead. And but, and because I, I, I was looking at the numbers, so, so you know, I'm a, I'm in my head. I'm always I'm a, I'm a math person. Oh my god. And Maria was like, no, hold on, hold And I'm like, nope, I'm an analyst. You're a, you're a musician. You're like yeah. in dreamland. Okay. Speaking Scott of- Ryan, Scott Florida. Ryan, Florida. Scott Ryan? Where is he? Oh, I think I- Did I hang up on you, Scotty? All right, hold on a second. I'm going to call Scott. All right, so Scotty is calling us. I think he's in Fort Lauderdale. Hold on a second, Scotty. He is- I'm calling him right now. All right, there he is. Scotty, are you there? I love you. Oh, my God. I love you, too. Scott Ryan. Th this is my friend, Scott Ryan. He's also my old roommate and wonderful guy and, and favorite of my grandmother's, by the way. Did you see the pictures of my grandma's birthday? I did. I was laughing on her throwing the shoe. Oh, my God. I forgot about the Stir shoe. Stir it up. Bring the wooden spoon. Who wrote that? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't. So, like... Scotty. Okay, let me put you on extra volume here. Say Florida? No. You got to help us out, Scotty. What? What is happening oh. down there? Because we can't watch the television. I know it's so close and it's I'm, sickening. I'm shaking. I mean, I'm watching the voting, and it's, you know, listen. Okay, so when I moved here, I moved to a, I moved to right outside Wilson Manors, which is, you know, Fort in, Lauderdale, uh, Broward County. It is just Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, South Florida, right uh, north of Miami. So I'm at the very bottom of Florida. A very, very gay, you know, feels very, um, you know, like similar to New York City, but when I first moved here, 
um, you know, the election was coming with um, Hillary and, and Trump, and the signs went up. I was actually shocked. I could not believe how many Trump signs were up in the neighborhood surrounding me. Wow. You know, it really threw me off because I felt like I was in a very, very, including in my neighborhood where I walk my dog and people I talk to. So I was really a little baffled. And as I've lived here, I've watched and I go, okay. Um, you know, and, and, and you to your right, you know, I absolutely agree with you that this is an uphill battle. I'm not super disheartened, although I'm very anxious. My heart is racing watching these numbers. I know, that's in. why I can't turn around. But, but for them to be this close in so many, like, very deeply red areas. Yeah, that um, is it's, true. It, it's giving me hope. Now, you know, Andre, honestly, Andrew Gillum, like, I didn't even know who that was you know, a couple months ago. So for him to come out of here and do this well, you know. You know, that's a really good be... point, Scotty. That's a really that good point. That is a really good point. The only thing, Scott, that like what really upsets me, yes, you're absolutely right. But I feel like today is election day. And as of today, we know who he is. We also, more importantly, know who his opponent is. And exactly. I think that what bothers me the most is that people – that there's so many people that keep voting for this horrendous trend of like, of liars, I mean, I hear, right. I see, I have, I, I feel like I'm such a good judge of character. When I see someone on television and I, and I listen to them speak, I know right away if they're, Oh well, wait, Doug, you know, Marisa just stop, stop for a second. She just said Dem, the Democrats took the governor of Illinois spot. Great. Wonderful. But she also said, what about Georgia? Can you say corrupt? Right. I mean, but in Florida, this DeSantis dude is awful. Awful. And furthermore, not only is he awful, Rick Scott was an awful governor. I have no idea how yeah, he is so no, close totally, in the polls with Bill Nelson. I, I don't get I, it. I don't either. And I to totally agree with, with, with Rick Scott. He's proven and shown again and again corruption, just a horrible, horrible human being on every level. And it's, you know, we're, I'm watching the numbers and they're so... Close. So like, yeah. close, yeah, but like, that's, that's gonna be concern. into the night. That's gonna be one of those races that's not well, called, may not even be called I'm tonight. Watching, I don't know. I'm watching CNN talk. It's what map, and they have 97 percent reported in. Yeah, you know, and I don't know how accurate this stuff is, and it's gonna come down to like counting the ones that were fell on the floor behind the machine. You know? Oh, I know. No, yeah, but you see, <laughs> but okay, to that point. Do you see how important every vote is? When people say my vote doesn't count, I freak out because I'm like, are you kidding me? It is so important. Also, the absentee ballots, uh, provisional ballots, every ballot counts. It really does. Yeah. Now, and who you vote for counts, too. You know, throwing a vote away, I think that's the major point of why the last election went the way it did. Right. You know, people throwing um, you know, their vote one way or another based on anger rather than voting for, you know, voting against someone and voting for someone that can be detrimental to a party. Now, going person. going back there, Scotty, do you feel, uh, being down there, that did you f find that younger people were out today? Did you see a lot of that, or did you see? You know, I voted last week. Oh, okay. Um, but, I, but when I was at the poll, and I was there on, like, a Wednesday afternoon, there was a line to vote and a line to put, to put your thing through the machine. You know, we do it ourselves here because it's Florida, you know. Um, yeah. But it was very, very, you know, and I'm in Broward County, so we're, you know, we're a very diverse county, but there's the rest of Florida, which is not so diverse. Right. You know, so I've been, Southern Florida always kind of leans, you know, a little more blue, at least South Florida. Definitely. Um, and then the rest of Florida is pockets, but for the most part, it's pretty, it's pretty Well, rough. do you think people are voting with their wallets and maybe wanting to help? Hold no. on. Is that what it is? I think people, first of all, that is a, that is a non, that is a non thing. When, when I hear anyone, uh, the majority of America are not millionaires. Right. Okay? So when you say people are voting with their wallets, it should be, maybe they're no, but voting, I'm saying voting down with in their, Florida. Maybe yeah. there's a lot of rich people. Are no, you joking? I, well, I know there's a lot of I, poor people too, but what do you think, Scotty? There are. Yeah. I think it's that one of the poorest honestly, states. Are, they're digging in on party lines and down here yeah. what I found is a lot of people just want to be like we're the winners we're in control Correct. and, and, suck yep. and they yeah. have no thought to what's actually happening in the political world yeah. or what, the, what they're doing to the constitution or what's happening in well, office it's like yep. you won you didn't suck it yeah. and, that, and that's 
it's, it's a really, really scary mentality. And if yeah. you look at the line across the state in the southern states, it's like, I mean, civil war again. It really, really is. Yeah. But, yeah. And, it, and I think it really, really boils down to education. Oh, my God. I was um, just going to say that, Scott. I literally, you took the words right education. out of my mouth. Absolutely. Yeah. You're from the north. If you if you were to again run some regressions and you run some numbers and you do some analysis, you uh, the way that you your mentality and the way that you vote and the way that you think and racism, all of that, it all boils down to education. If Florida education has the worst education parents, or one of the yeah, worst parents, education. Your parent and who you surround parents. yourself with, who you surround yourself with. And another yeah. thing is, you know, I was thinking about this today. Most of us that are well, those of us that are here talking about this or people that are popping on, um, and I'm trying to read everybody's comments and I really appreciate them. I, all of us have something to lose, all of us. And, and then I thought, wait a minute, you know who has, has never experienced that kind of loss? What kind of loss? Older white men. What They've kind of never been in the minority. They've never not been in control. So the thought of them they when they think that they may not be in complete control they freak out it's we, not all white men no you know, not all white men but i'm saying these like older white republican men so they're because most of us have know what it's like to not win know what it's like to be picked on know what it's like to be in a minority know what it's like to be on the outskirts we've all experienced that whether we're women whether we're gay whether we're hispanic <laughs> There's a lot of gay guys down here that voted Trump. And really? Well, I got to tell you, why do you think that a is? A lot of Latino and other. Um, you know, you know what, Scott? I wanted to, I wanted, I think personally, because I have a friends that, you know, fall in those categories that vote Republican. And I tell you, after speaking with them, a variety of them, and they, by the way, they all live in Florida. They <laughs> fall under two categories. They are either misinformed that's one ginormous category the and other elitist. Yeah. And elitist that's and, and the other category is exactly voters. that is 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 you but you know what being an elitist is having it's is low self-esteem because you're trying to affiliate no, yourself no. with like a, a uh like i have i really quick just really quick i want to give you this example i have a friend i had a friend who's cuban i have no i have no uh trump supporter friends now i can't handle it I, my life is, I, I need to live a long life. I yes. can't be friends with them. So I had a, um, a, a Cuban friend, um, owns a home, owns a business, but uses um, uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, uses food stamps, so on and so forth, lives in Florida, right? Of course, abuses the system, set, voted for Trump. Oh, she, a, a closeted uh, homosexual lives voted for trump and then says that the reason is because she did not want to have to pay for other people to use the resources that the government provides for underprivileged people and then i'm like but wait you use those resources what do you mean you you don't want you're the one that's abusing the system because you don't you have the money to be able to support yourself but you abuse the system it's it's yeah. really like this mentality where they think that because they're doing it but but they're better because right. they're, well, they're not the as... I know it, it, that feeds into the entitlement that's the problem with the entire country. Yeah. Is, is one of my, my leading complaints about watching the younger generations come up. The entitlement is, is, is overwhelming. Maria, you and I worked somewhere where we were taught that when, remember Rick used to say, the customer is never right, you're right. Right. And, and people, I hear them go, whatever happened to the customer is always right. And I'm like, that can't possibly be a thing right. because the customer nowadays will say, I get this play for free and I get this for free and I get that for free. You know, it just right. can't be. Yeah. He was actually a great boss. We get along with him really well. He, he used was. to say, look, I know who my employees are. I believe in them. That's why I hired them. And I'm going to back them up. I actually used to really like that. I did too. He said, even if you're wrong, we'll back you up in front of the customer and then we'll talk about it later. Yeah. That was very empowering to run a business, um, to, to have employees run a business in a, in a really well-run way, I thought. Yeah. But anyway, that's totally off track. But I, I hear your point, and I, and I agree with you. And, you know, I, I don't understand sometimes where their vote comes from, and I try to listen to hear, um, and they don't really have, um, 
you know, the facts are the problem now because everyone believes their facts. Right. And so what they're taught and what the facts are presented to them as they're presenting back are what they believe to be facts. Right. And everyone believes their side of the flat. Oh right. my God. And in an administration where you get about a thousand lies a day, right. nothing right. that you're hearing right. is fact. Like I the fact, you it. have to look for it. You have to actually, no, you do. You have to educate yourself. I mean, I can't tell, I spend all day. I mean, I'm very passionate about it because I, it's, it's what I want to do. It's my, I'm, I, I want to go to law school. Like I'm, so I am, you know, an exception, but, but if you're going to come on my Facebook page or on any of my social media or even in person and want to have a political discussion with me, please have your facts right. completely right. straight because right. I am a dictionary. That's and that's a problem. A problem. They just repeat what they're they hearing. Go, well, most I've always said this. Fight. Most people are sheep. They are. Most people yeah. do not want to take the time to educate themselves. They just don't. It's too much work. Well, they, verify, they verify their facts with the site that backs them up, and therefore it's a fact. And so the problem is that even if they are actually looking to educate themselves, they're educating themselves and still they get the answer that says, yep, you're right, rather than actually... You know, go on. And that goes for both parties. You know what? I'm guilty of passing stuff on and saying this is this because I heard it. And I I'm agree. looking it up and going, oh, wow. Have you ever... All right, Scotty, I have my friend Wayne calling in from Texas, so I'm going to yep. let you go. Thank but you, Scott. Bye. Thank you so this much for that walk. insight. Bye, we love you so much. Bye, honey. Bye, man. Bye, honey. Bye. Hey, Wayne. Are you there? Oh, we okay. I'll call Wayne back. All right, so that was Scott Ryan. And Scotty, if you get a chance, please post your um, your business website. Scotty is a, a real estate guy in Florida. I'm going to call Wayne back, um, and I want you to post your your uh, where you uh, you know your company. He's got his own business here. All right, and we are calling Wayne Bears. He's in um, San Antonio, Texas, I believe. What's going on in Texas? Oh Can my I turn God. around and check? Oh, there's a commercial on. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Wayne. How are you, honey? Hi, Maria. How are you doing? Oh, I'm okay, honey. We're kind of stressed out here. We're like freaking out. It's... Oh, we are too. Oh, my ah. God. I am. It, it's... I'm here by myself because um, I can't go to any watch parties no. since 2016. And so I'm here by myself watching MSNBC. And, um, I know. But listen, we're do that, you're doing great over there. That, you're, you're doing, he's doing really well. Yeah, well, it's 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 pretty much tied. So, um, but a lot of you know, Texas is in two time zones. So some of um, some of them are have just closed. Some of the polls have just closed. Today, okay, 30. I didn't know that it was two time zones. Wow. Well, I know it's huge. It's I mean yeah, that's a it's really a big huge state. state. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge state. But. So. Wayne, oh, that's been crazy. Wayne, I'm like you. I you know it's funny. We I was gonna have like a party tonight. And Judy said, I thought you were going to invite people. And then I just, like, I got too freaked out. We lost the Senate race. Um, oh, it's not over yet, is no, it? No, but we lost. We the lost Republicans one. Republicans flipped, just flipped, flipped the Democrats. Okay. Oh, my God. Who it's, flipped it? Who flipped uh, it, you know? I, I don't know. It just says we flipped it. Uh, they flipped it. It doesn't say Well, who. we flipped, too. I know that. No, not. This Wait, is the Senate. Oh, the Senate. I know the Republicans, the Republicans flipped um, Indiana. Yeah, they won so Indiana. Won. That was so one of the ones they flipped. Them. Um, so, uh, Wayne, what do you attribute this Beto um, enthusiasm? I mean, Texas is very red state. I don't. Right. I, what do you? If what's you happening? Texas, if you notice, Texas, all the big cities are very democratic. Like all of them will go: San Antonio, Austin, <laughs> Houston, Tarrant County, which is um, Fort Worth, is is more Republican. So, but I think. People don't like Ted Cruz. Of course not. Well, that's what I was saying. I know oh, he's awful. He's awful. But well, what's there yeah, to let like? Me tell you what I think, let me tell you what I think he's done. He's kind of kept his mouth shut. And because anytime he opens his mouth before the campaigning, he says the stupidest things and people all roll their eyes and go, oh my God, I have to vote for him. So I'm sure someone has told him to shut up, don't say anything. Yep. And, and that way you'll win because... When he opens his mouth, he's a stupid thing. Yeah, well, you're right about that. And you notice, like, even in the debates, all he did was, like, that nervous laughter. 
It was ridiculous, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it makes I, me so nervous. I know. Well, uh, all right. Well, listen, uh, we're all going to hang in here and, uh, you yeah. know, want to thank you because I, I think about you guys all the time because you're so cool and sweet. And uh, then I, we love you. I, we, well, I love you too, honey. And, you know, I'm sure most of your friends are voting along Democratic lines, but yeah. I mean, that would yeah. be. Look, it would really be a miracle if, if Texas flipped. I mean, you never know. This is going to go well into the night. Yeah. 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 I know. And um, yeah. all right. So, Wayne, uh, the name of your deli. Say the name of your deli, honey, so people can come. Uh, visit. W.D. Deli. We're in San Antonio. Um, great place. It is come a great by. place. Bring your food for me. And, and they, we will see you on um, Christmas time. Okay. I can't wait. I love you very much. Say hi to Michael, okay? I will. I love you, too. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye sweetheart. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Of You're course. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So that's my friend Wayne Bear. Such a sweet guy. And he and Michael own WD Deli in San Antonio. It's a really nice restaurant. So Shanna Sharp has popped on. Now, here's what's happening at Mess Hall tonight. 2194 Frederick Douglass Boulevard in Harlem. I know, Shanna. Me too. What does Shanna I, say? I actually want to work his campaign. Beta, I want to. If I he know. if he loses this race, I think the dem, the DNC needs to be one hundred percent behind him to run for president. I think he'd be a great candidate to run against against um, Orange Tug. Yeah, absolutely. So now, um, so many people have come on and so many great comments. But we were talking. Joe Gullis, come on. I love you, Maria. Talk to you soon. If you see a shoe downtown, hold on to it. Did somebody lose their shoe, Joe? Unbelievable. Joe was there the other day. So, so Scott Ryan is going to, Scotty, post your, uh, if you haven't already done it, post your website so that people can find you down in Florida if they need property. Scott is in real estate. He's doing amazingly well. All right. So this is the section of our show called, well, let's do it now. I know we're not there yet, but let's hit the section of our show called, go ahead, keep eating. I can't eat. Let me tell you something. Somebody <laughs> said something today about emotional eating. I, I think I've gained about 20 pounds since. Me too. And I've, interestingly enough, I'm going to Florida this weekend, which is where I go to work out. I have to travel to work out. No, I, but I you don't also have here. a school project. I so do. that's why you're. But, uh, but I'm going to Florida. I, I want to boycott it. And it keeps calling my name over there. Well, you know, it's just, I don't know. We just, I, I, how do you tell the young people to not give up when these things keep happening? I actually gave a presentation to a bunch of undergrads today. Did you? Half the class didn't vote. More Why? than half of them. They were like, I forgot. And I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. That's another thing. What are I we going to do with New millennials Jersey, that New just, Jersey went? But not my for, family. They're great. But, <laughs> but what are we going to do with these millennials? What do you have to do to get them out of their chairs? I have no idea. I, I, I don't get it. I don't know what's going to happen. But I, 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 I want to, um, I'm looking, oh, well, Tam, Tammy Baldwin one in Wisconsin. That is great news. Tammy Baldwin held her seat. All right, let's go to the section called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. And then we'll read our comments and people that call in uh, while we're freaking out here. I I know, I'm, I'm like so stressed out. The election party, I made a giant thing, sausage and peppers and meat. Oh my God. Nobody ate. Can I just, can we just recap? Nobody. If anybody uh, was at my election party in 2016, oh my God, it was such a huge party. I I had two cakes with Hillary Clinton's face on it. I had food. I had we had a pinata. You know, we had a pinata, a, a Donald Trump pinata. <laughs> uh, we had Donald Trump toilet paper. Yeah, we were ready. We were set. No one ate. No one ate. Yes. Everyone, was, we were all in front of the television like this. We actually had uh, one of our friends had a map with a blue crayon and a red crayon because we knew who needed to do what in order to win. And she kept coloring things in red. And we were all like, what, what? is going on? Yeah, that but you know what? I said that from it. the beginning. I said there is an underbelly of hatred and control in this country. And, and, and you know, I've always said that there are two fears in this world. Fear of not getting what you want and fear of losing what you have. And those people that are afraid to lose what they have, which is dominance, dominance, sheer dominance, they're just terrified of losing it. And they wouldn't lose it. We'd all be just be equal. Wouldn't that be nice to be equal? That's all it is, the pursuit of happiness. But they're so afraid to, hold, to lose a grip of their dominance that they fight tooth and nail. That's all it's really about. Lynn Portis has joined us. I'm Hi, still sweetheart. thinking about what Alabama has on there. I'm never going to get over that. I, Oh, well, I yeah. can never well, unsee Alabama, that. that's, you know, to Shannon will tell you. But Shannon's dad was great. He was on the show. He called in. He was lovely. 
All right, so let's go to our food section, shall we? What's the name of the section, Judy? Come on. Go ahead, keep eating. She's so depressed now. She I'm not depressed. Go ahead, is not keep eating. Yeah. All right, so this is what I made today. Because Judy said we should go with meat and potatoes, right? Because the country, you know, meat and potatoes. So this is what I made. What's the best meat you can get that I think? Filet mignon. So I splurged and got a filet mignon, and I took portobello mushrooms, shallots, um, and I, uh, let me see, I put parsley. Yeah, it's really good. You're going to love it. Put parsley. I put, uh, of course, I love, you know, garlic. Mm. But garlic, parsley, uh, Pinot Noir, and truffle oil. And uh, let that marinate for about four hours after yeah. I, uh, yep. And then I took my cast iron pan, seared it, and then threw it in with the uh, portobello mushrooms and onions and sauteed that all together. Then I made a gravy using the stock that I had for the for the beef with uh, that, a little bit of cream. You know, I love my cream. And um, a bunch of spices, you know, like uh, adobo, things like that. So that's what... It actually smells delicious. That's what we're having with some nice ciabatta Italian bread. Now, Annette Zito there, we were uh, Facebook messaging this week, and she said you should, I was like, I'm going to just make baked potatoes. She said you should make blue potatoes. So I got blue potatoes. They're kind of purple, though. So I thought, well, you know what? Maybe that's a message from my higher power. That purple, what is purple? If you take blue and red, <coughs> it turns to purple, right? So this is my offering to the universe. Maybe we can learn to get along on both sides of the aisle. Maybe that's what I'm going to pray for, because obviously it's not going to be one or the other. We're going to always be stuck in the middle. We have to learn to get along. So that's why, hence, symbolically, the purple potatoes. And what I did with this was I took some pumpkin spice, believe it or not, butter, pumpkin spice, um, again, garlic, because, you know, I have to put garlic in everything, Salt and pepper, and I sauteed it all together. And they're actually really good. You like them? All right, good. I'm glad. Because I boiled them first for a while, and then I fried them. I'm, I threw them in the fryer. Okay, so that's what that is. And then, Yum. yeah, that's going to be delicious. So we'll just eat our feelings as we've been doing Absolutely. for two years. Sounds good to me. Okay, what did I do for a salad here? Mm. Yeah, the salad's going to be great. I'm picking everything. That's all right. You make sure it's not poisonous. Romaine mm. lettuce. Um, apples, blue cheese. Apples. Uh, delicious, delicious apples, um, uh, Persian cucumbers, and then blue cheese, delicious blue cheese crumble, which I love. I also put some chives in there. You know, I do love my chives. Mm. And I think we're going to go with a, just a simple balsamic. What do you think? I lived with Maria for five years, and I gained <laughs> about 50 pounds. No, no for real, 50 pounds. Yeah, it's, it, it's easy to gain weight in this house. Because I like to cook a lot and I like to eat. I, that's the thing. I can't give up the food. I just can't do it. So that's what we're doing. That's our delicious salad. You know, I love my salads. That take, Now, for dessert, what did we do for dessert? Blueberry pie. There it is. And I got a half, not a whole pie, because I was afraid we would eat the whole pie. So I got a half blueberry pie, because they sell them halves now. Isn't that something? Amazing. All right, so this is our dinner tonight. I was going to have a party and have people over, but we're just too stressed up. So, however, though, if, if you're in the city, please go to Mess Hall, 2194. Have hot dogs. They're so good, vegetarian oh hot dogs. They're they really, have, really and good. And regular hot dogs, And regular. Too. I always And the kitchen's open till 11. So you've got another hour and 10 minutes to order your hot dogs at Mess Hall. They're so good. Get down there. Maybe we'll go down, too. Who knows? Mm, I don't think so. No, you're too stressed? I have a lot of work to do. All right. But uh, I'm there Saturday and Sunday. I'm the manager there. Please come visit me. I would love to see you. And I often make uh, my delicious Maria Sangria as I did. I have a fall version of it now. But I'm going to make a different fall version of Maria Sangria this weekend. So I usually make it in these big, beautiful um, decanters. And my staff is amazing. And I love them. All right. So um, it looks like the Democrats picked up three seats in the Wait. House. And we lost. One seat in the Senate. In the Senate. Which one did we lose? Um, I don't know. I just know that we lost one seat. So that means now we need to pick up three. We're probably going to lose Florida, so that means we need to pick well, up. Well, listen, I I'm sorry, but I'm not giving up yet. I just can't give up yet. You know how I am. We're going to lose Florida. Well, I don't know. I, I'm just not giving up yet. I'm not going to do it. I am big on happy endings, and so you know what's going to be so awful about this is that I'm literally not going to watch the news for a week because if I have to watch Donald Trump take credit for any of this. Well, I'm going to barf. Barf. Yeah. Well, you know how he is. 
he does his thing. There's not much we can do about it. I, you know, one thing that I could just, I just like now I just pray for people. I, I, I don't know what else to do anymore. I'm just baffled. And I, the Democrats did flip a governor seat though. Where's which is good. Where's that? I don't that? know where, but we did flip one. All right. Well, that's good. I like the purple potato sentiment. Thank you, Rena. You know, I am really, because when I talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, it's a whole different ball game. It's just what I, what I am so disgusted by is the hate rhetoric. It's just, it, I, I was going to say unnecessary, but it's beyond unnecessary. It's evil. There's no reason for it at any point in time. Uh, so Renee has joined us. Hi, Renee. Uh, I, okay, thank you, Annette. It's not over till it's over. So uh, I did go with the blue potatoes. What do you think of that, Annette? Did you, Annette is a she. She's a chef. She's a famous chef. So we're gonna have. What did Melissa shoot. write? Melissa, where is she? Right there. Melissa, same say here. Yes. Everybody's not giving up yet. I'm not giving up yet. I'm sorry. I'm just not gonna do it. All right. So what do we have left for time on the show? And um, okay, we have um, we have 15 minutes. And um, I'm trying to stay positive. There's just like so much going on today at my my. Uh, I will say though, here's the, a positive. Today at my voting area, which is usually so crowded that it, it's like hours and hours and hours, it did go quicker than I thought it would go, and it was much more organized. So that was a refreshing thing. But what's happening in Georgia? Does can anybody tell us what's happening in Georgia with this awful? I know she's losing, but. First of all, the lights, one of the, the voting places, the lights actually went out. Do you know this? Mm -hmm. The lights went out, and this is what it was. As somebody tried to, they didn't have an extension cord. An extension cord, that's all they needed in this voting place, and nobody could produce it. I mean, for the love of God. It's like a Chevy Chase movie or something, like what's happening down there. It's like a, a, a voting vacation. Except it's not funny. It's not right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. So it's a, a lot of crazy things happening. So, uh, Randa, they extended the hours in Georgia. Thank you, Randa. Okay. You see, there is my hope coming alive. I am not giving up. I'm telling you anything can happen. What, and what, if anything has come out of this is that it got people out to vote. All right. Marisa says, first of all, all the secretary of state who oversees the election running as a candidate has not recused himself that is i mean i cannot even with even, that i know even i Jeff cannot even with that that's like okay les hopkins says msnbc are saying there's an 80 percent champ of the dems still taking the house really yeah the house yeah i told you that we were gonna take yeah the but house. you just said that we were losing a little bit of and i got no, really we, we more split three seats. i'm gonna have to eat two steaks you there's four in there you know that okay so i am prepared and i can't wait to get the bread out you know i love bread we stop bread i love <laughs> All right, on a positive note, my grandmother, my nanny, turned 99 uh, yesterday. And we had a big party for her in Boston. I drove there on three hours sleep, enjoyed the party, slept, drove back. And you know what? It was worth it. It was really nice. And I thought about all the- I know. There was a lawsuit placed against Kemp. And then the, um, the, uh, the Supreme Court of the state said it was too close to the election and they couldn't even do anything at this point. Unbelievable. But-, uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it should have been done when he said, I'm going to run, yeah, I mean, but, right? I mean, right. I'm going to run, so now I have to yeah, but you know myself. what? I'm a little there's surprised about There's no morality about anymore. No. Like, there's no, like, just win the fair way. Do you feel well, like look, winning you said the non-fair way yeah, is, you, just makes you happy? You Listen, uh. you said this yourself. When Republicans you win, if, if, they, if this was a fair, if there are fair votes cast, most of the time Democrats would win because there are technically more Democrats than Republicans in this country. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when Republicans win, like all, look at the, all that crazy, either they're saying if they lose, then they're saying that, that we cheated or there's some, I don't even understand what the hell they're talking about half the time. <laughs> I really don't. I don't. And, and well, listen, the electoral college is all messed up. I'm not saying I'm not, I'm, and I'm really not being a sore loser. It's just that well, we haven't they lost you. feel, no, I'm talking about for all, for okay, all the don't elections. Get too close to the it's mic. just that they okay. feel like um, states like, states that have smaller populations have over-representation. And then right, states like that Montana. have, that have, uh, Montana is not really that, that small. And states that have, well, people-wise it is, it's just a big state, but, but, but per capita. 
Yeah. So, and then the states like California, you say, yeah, but wait, California has, um, you know, a lot of uh, electoral college uh, votes. Representative. Yes. But per capita, it doesn't. Uh, it's not even. Yeah. It's not even. It should, you should have uh, more people representing the people. Right. And then, but, but then what they say is, well, but wait, New York and California and Massachusetts, they have so many people. Exactly. Why we should have more representation. Right. But we're a blue state. So that's the problem. So Renee is saying Bob Menendez just won. Yes. Yeah. I that know. is, that was a like, I could have eked out either way. And you know, is he the best candidate? No. And I mean, I'm, we're, for, I live in Jersey. Yeah. So I can't tell you when I would see those, uh, those, um, ads from Bob Hugan on, on television. I was I, furious that this man has a woman. His I don't know if anybody, if anyone has have seen any of my Jersey friends on here have seen those ads. It's it's a it's a woman holding her her infant daughter, saying, "How can I explain to her a vote for Bob Menendez um, uh, after his you know prostitution scandal? I have to protect her." And blah blah blah. And then he comes on, and this this message was approved by Bob, by Bob Hugan. So you can't pick and choose when sex is going to bother you. Mm -hmm. If it's going to bother you, then you, we wouldn't have elected um, Judge Kavanaugh. Right, exactly, uh, exactly. Just so everyone knows, or the, the, a uh, rape is very different than hiring a prostitute. Right. Because you're not forcing them to have sex. Right. Well, with, that's what they goes I mean, back to consent. Everything goes back to consent. It's unbelievable. But the other guy, what was he, the, the Republican guy, what's his name? In Jersey? Mooch? Bob Hugan. Okay. But t t talk about the EpiPen. Yeah. Thing. So this now his daughter represents this uh, this uh, pharma company. I for it's a it's a very known pharma company. It's slipping my mind at the moment. But he uh, raised EpiPen prices like six hundred and something percent. Made millions and of dollars off of EpiPens? it. And who uses EpiPens? It's usually kids. By no, the way. it's every, it's a lot of people. A lot, a lot of people, people but have a lot of have, kids. Um, yeah. A lot of kids because so, I know that. At schools, we have to be educated on EpiPens because of that. So, all right. I I would love to, I wonder if anybody, there's nobody, we don't have anybody in Georgia. Oh, what's happening in um, Arizona? Does anybody know? Oh, yeah, Arizona, they haven't spoken about that. You know what? That's and, where Jeff Flake is retiring. Yes, and Carol Chinameo, I was trying to get a hold of her. She teaches it at was, the university was, um, there. I was trying to get her It was actually to neck and neck. I can't believe Tennessee, though. Have you guys been watching that? Do you know who Blackburn is? And Beardson, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name uh, correctly. Bredesen. 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 Was a, right. was a very loved uh, governor before. And now I can't believe that he's behind in the polls. And that woman, Blackburn, is a, is female, a, she's a monster. Female Trump. Yeah. She's a monster. And I can't believe that she's ahead in the polls that way. Yeah, I, but, I, I, and I, I yeah, can't but Tennessee believe. is red. I, I mean, I didn't expect much from Tennessee. It just is. It's very rare. Well, the governor who was the governor for was running. I I thought that maybe, but he's been out of political, you know, of the political realm for a while. So I don't know. Right. And um, all right. So yeah. Does any so if anybody knows anything about Arizona, because it's hard to like watch to you. Hey Brian Ristol, how's it going? Um, if anybody knows anything about Rory Taggart, hi Rory up in Canada. Canada is such a nice country, Rory. We could learn from you. Um, Hi, Rory. I love your posts. They're so funny. Yeah, they are the very funny. Uh, okay, first of all, the oh uh, yeah. So and I, apparently nobody knows. I'm trying to like we're trying to get results as we're doing this, but we're gonna have to just wait. I think a lot of these races are gonna go well into the night. I just feel it. I mean, some of them definitely. House estimate is a GOP. 210 Democrats 225. That's the that's the House. Uh, Democrats need to gain three. Too early to call Texas. This is fascinating. Amazing. Fascinating. Fascinating. Oh my God. And some in some districts, Beta was up by 57 percent. No, in no, some no, no, districts, no. he's up by 15 percent. 15 percent. Yeah. But that's a lot. I, right. He's up to 57 percent. Right. So I mean, this is really like that's a miracle in itself. I'm sorry. Listen, some things you can't change overnight, but I, what I really want to put out there for the younger people is I don't, because I'm like big on, get out there and vote, get out there and vote. I'm still big on get out there and vote. It, I'm, I'm just big on, forget, I, I'm going to say before you get out there and vote, 
educate, educate yourself. yourself yeah. Don't just go out and vote for what your parents are saying. And if you're an adult, don't just go out and vote for the same party you've always voted for. You know, in recent weeks, I've met a few Republicans that are just staunch Republicans. And I've been able to have really good conversations with them, which is very different than the conversations I was previously having. Um, and I found in, in, in conversing with them that what what they're saying back to me is not the Republican Party that we have today. So it's almost like they they're 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 not acknowledging the da what is happening in government right now mm -hmm. with the Republican Party. And they're just saying, no, no, it's going to be fine because usually the Republicans do this and usually they do that. It's it, you know. That's not a, a, a realistic way to look at government because um, if you if you're a student of history at all and you study how these waves of of uh, of people took over, Fidel Castro didn't just come along and right. and you know things happen in waves. Well, he also and they, lied they to people slowly. and told them he was going to help right. them out. So did Hitler. So did right. all of these people. So. Th Horrific things can happen right. if you're if you are not, not paying attention. You can't be complacent, and you're buying the lies. Right. You know. And here's another thing. And I, I, I mean, I, this car supposed caravan of migrants that's coming, this which way, is probably not even true. I don't know that I believe that. By the time it gets here, it's going to be like 200 people. That's what they said. Yeah. I and don't why even are 15, whatever, even if it's 5,000 troops, even if it's five, why are our troops at the border? Um, why didn't they send them to Puerto Rico when right. that happened? How about Flint, Michigan? Right. Who still don't have clean water. They still don't have clean water. Puerto Rico still is Come not. On. Are we really supposed to? This is why I think this is why this is really upsets me because then people repeat this to me. And it's it's literally just a rhetoric of hate because you really think 200 people, shoeless, poor, are going to come in, invade our country. We're all going to die. Come on. This is right. not uh, alien invasion. Right. Like, stop right. with but this nonsense. Really, I know, but they So it's it. coming from a place of hate. I spoke with someone today who were like, you, we can't allow that because they're going to come and take your jobs. Who oh is hiring an immigrant? Who is hiring someone Wait. that has no papers? Right. And if those people do get Wait. hired, they're going to get hired to do work that you don't want to do. And he right. said to me, no, it's going to affect the African-American uh, employment. And then I said, well, that's racist in itself because you're assuming that African-American uh, Americans aren't qualified for the jobs right. that normal, you know, that everyone else is not normal. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that, that, uh, that white people or Hispanics are, aren't, uh, right. are, that's, what are you talking about? Look, I, I always put this out there. If there is somebody that would like those jobs that they're taking, those $5 an hour. Not picking, even. That, right. Picking potatoes in a field, picking lettuce, working in restaurants under the table. If you really want that job, please let, let us know. Let me tell know. you something. I worked, uh, while I was going through, while I was putting myself through undergrad, I worked in restaurants the whole entire time. For a while, I worked at this one restaurant. Where I happen to love it, but um, I'm the nicest kitchen staff and the nicest chef. They were all Mexican. I, I believe I know, that, that none of them true. had um, papers. And um, they, I think that the chef uh, got paid, I don't know, $12 an hour. I know, it's amazing. Um, yeah, so, that's what Leo was saying. You wouldn't believe how surprised Let me tell you something, though. This chef was so immaculate. I he know. was Mexican, actually. He was immaculate in his presentation of his dishes. It was it was amazing. Listen, I've worked in restaurants and bars, too, for 30 years. He made delicious food. He was clean. He was organized. The hardest always workers on time, Mexican. Never late. And then the rest of the staff got paid like 6 or $7 an hour. They did all the prepping. I know. The cleanest restaurant I've ever worked for, actually. It yeah. was the cleanest restaurant I've ever worked for. I know. So no one, I mean, come on. It's it's such, it's horrible. Well, because what uh, are people afraid of? And and then, uh, oh, here's another thing. When What's-His-Face, I won't even say his name. When What's-His-Face said that the, the synagogue should have, if they only had rifles to defend themselves, that wouldn't have happened. Okay, most of those people were praying. Yeah, and they were <laughs> 65 and up. Yeah. What are no, they supposed they were to have? Actually, 70 and up. And what are they supposed to have? Assault? That's like I should. That's what I should get my dad for Christmas. I think an assault rifle, so he can defend himself when he goes to church on Sunday. For the love of God, shut up. 
He said the same thing about the post. Well, I spoke Nicole. with somebody. Somebody actually said that, that same exact thing oh today, and God. they were Jewish actually that I was talking to. Well, he's but right. you know they 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 in conversation they're comparing that situation with Israel. You right. can't. Yes, in Israel, everyone has guns. Guess what else they have? After high school, every single resident of Israel goes and Work, goes to the army. Military. So everyone Two is years. a militant. You, How are you comparing that to here? Nobody's a militant here. You yeah. have to force people to sign up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, and then, the, and then once different. they do sign up, they send them to the border because right. a, a, a nine-year-old might are coming. a rock. Right. I mean, I, I, I can't take it can't take it anyway we are getting close to the end of our show that went by fast yeah I i'm know. so glad it's the end because i need to go watch what's happening i know and, and i I'm i need to anxiety. eat because i i need to emotionally eat mm -hmm. because i'm stressed out um and i'm going to eat and that's all there is to it um so anyway the, it's not over till it's over i i am leo always said hopeful. we picked up seven seats in the house thank you we leo. did leo thank yeah. you thank you leo Rodriguez. how much time jimmy a minute. A minute. Okay, we want to thank Jim Bell of Armed Radio. He's our producer and engineer and always takes care of us every week. Thank you, Jimmy. This is episode 69. How ironic, um, as Scotty said. And um, we're just going to hope for the best. And listen, just keep, just keep your hopes up in life. And just let's be nice to each other. That's what we really need. Let's be nice to each other. All right, we love you and appreciate you, and we'll see you next Bye. week, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on What's the Story with Maria. Say goodnight, Judy. Good night.